I will pop you all on mute. There we go. Let me double check. There's no one else wanting to get in. Not that I can see. I'll let anyone else in. And we're recording. Hello, this is Phil, Discover Tai Chi for Lim Power. Here we are again. Uh, this week, we're exploring uh, the difference between balance and stability. Sometimes they get conflated, but they're two different things in reality. Although there's an overlap, a bit like a Venn diagram. Okay, let's get started. Let's get moving. So, nice comfortable stance if you're standing up with me. If you are seated, then again, see if you can have a self-supporting torso, i.e. you've moved away from your seat back, if at all possible. If you really need support from that seat back, please do use it. But we're endeavoring to, again, be self-supporting, whether on our feet or on our seat. And again, Let's see if we can just explore a little simple range of motion. We're going to have our right hand hold a mirror, our left hand on a table. And we're just going to isolate the head and neck and turn the head as we take that hand out to the side and then back. And then we swap hands like so. And then we take the head turning to the left and then back to the center. And right now we've got a stable base of support via our feet or our seat. We're not moving anywhere. We're stationary on the spot. And because we've got our feet apart, certainly if we're standing, that gives us a bigger base of support. If we think of stability a bit like a foundation upon which we build a building, and certainly in Tai Chi terms, we think of our posture and our stance arising from the foundation that we create with our feet, even if they are prosthetic feet and legs if we happen to be wearing them. But I'm just going from one side to the other. So the body stays still and it's just head and neck. So that keeps us very stable. Okay, let's just, just ease some pressure, just have a little move. So we're familiar with our rocking boat movement, this shift from side to side. See if we can have a little bit of a wider stance. Again, you go as far as you feel comfortable if you are wearing, using lower limb prosthetics, then again, there tends to be an optimum width for you to feel comfortable in and within which you can maybe move. So again, I can't give you any prescriptions here, but let's just explore that range of motion. So we've got a little bit of time to travel from one side to the other because we've got this wider base of support, a bigger foundation if we want to put it in those terms. And Tai Chi begins to help us understand this relationship between balance, which is dynamic, and stability, which is our foundations upon which we can build our balance. <clears throat> Wonderful. We can use this base to enjoy a movement of releasing arrows. So I'm picking my hands up. I'm looking to my left, dropping my left arm, but then tilting lightly to the right, not too far, letting the arrow release, recentering, letting my hands drop and then lifting again. This time we're 
looking to the right, opening the bow, but shifting our weight to the left. And again, it doesn't need to be a big shift of weight, just enough to tip the boat a little bit. We don't want to take it so close as I go to the opposite direction, so close to capsizing that there's very little room for error. In Tai Chi sort of general kind of rules, shall we say, there's a 70% rule, i.e. we don't tend to move our balance beyond 70% of what we can manage or control. So if you think in those kinds of terms, that might be helpful. I tend to go via how I feel as I move my weight, because that's how we tend to do things in the day-to-day -day world. Um, we don't tend to think of percentages, but... So I'm just feeling where my weight is, that it stays well and truly between my base of support. So I'm not worrying if we're in sync, we're just exploring this relationship between movement, balance and stability. Let's bring those feet in again. If you sat down, see if you can have a little move. Okay, so a little bit more difficult for people who are seated because they've already adopted a much more stable position than a standing position. You're in a seat, that seat provides an extra level of stability and therefore it's a bit more difficult. But even so, as I remember when I used my wheelchair out and about in the day-to-day -day world, it doesn't take much if you haven't got much control of your trunk and head position for you to feel like your balance is going to be upset because you're losing stability as a consequence. So if we bring our feet together, okay, and we do the same movement opening the bow, you're going to find that we've got very little scope for moving our balance because the base of support is small. So just be mindful of this because there's very little room for error now. So as I look to the left, I can only tip my weight a tiny bit. Otherwise, I'd have to take a compensatory step. Otherwise, I would literally just fall over. If I do the same on the opposite side, I can only move maybe, I don't know what, maybe an inch if we're using old term <laughs> measurements or a couple of centimeters. And that's as far as I can go safely. Let's go again up to the left and just notice how little it takes for you to realize that you need to take a step in order to be able to move that balance of yours any further. Again, if we just open our feet, that's better, isn't it? All of a sudden it feels better because we've got a wider base of support. We know that we've got more stability. In fact, there's research on this in, in relation to balance, stability, and falls, or falls prevention perhaps would be more accurate. But as we feel less stable and less able to correct our balance, um, it raises anxiety levels and it closes down the range of activities we're prepared to engage in, simply as a consequence of not feeling balanced or comfortable on the base of support that we have, either in our seat or our feet. So it begins to point out just how important this stuff is because it can have a serious impact on our life. Okay, if we can, again, move that right leg forward a little bit. 
So we kind of begin to create a diagonal stance. Let's, let me move back a bit so you can see my feet. So I've moved this right leg forward. Again, this is going to be different for different people, depending on, again, if we're thinking about lower limb prosthetics. But it gives me scope now to move diagonally from one foot to the other with quite a bit of range of motion, because, again, we've got a big or wider base of support compared to that narrow base of support. This is a very familiar and common Tai Chi stance called bow stance. This kind of diagonal braced type stance. So it's worth exploring because so much of Tai Chi is really about this, this exploration of our balance in relation to our base of support we have with the earth, connected with the earth. Bring that right foot back. And again, obviously, this is going to be different for so many people, depending on their circumstances. I'm a unilateral, uh, below knee amputation with a prosthetic. It could be that someone else is bilateral below knee, or we've got above knee all at varying levels as well, all of which make substantial differences to how people feel on their feet. Again, I'm saying feet, even if we're talking about prosthetic feet. I'm going to move my left foot forward. The interesting thing for me is that I feel less stable with my left foot forward than my prosthetic side, which is my right side. I think that's to do with the fact that my rear foot tends to be the foot that tends to maybe do the bulk of the work. And therefore, I now just feel a little less stable. I can just feel that I'm a bit more cautious about how I move. So I hope you get the gist of what I'm getting at, that balance and stability in physical terms has its relationship to how we feel in our emotional state, our mental state. And so part of what I explore in Tai Chi for my own practice and hopefully with you guys is that Tai Chi affords us an opportunity to get to know ourselves in relation to these simple building blocks of balance and stability because that's really what Tai Chi is about. Let's do another movement. Let's do our little Tai Chi sequence, which involves Chi Shu, our wave hands, and our little seaweed movement. So we're moving sideways, or we might be if we were taking steps, or we'll just be doing our little side-to-side -side step. So let's start off, shall we? We'll do Chi Shu three times. So here we are, nice and stable, not going anywhere, not shifting weight. So hopefully this facilitates us being able to really set the scene and calm things down. And then here's the beginning of wave hands. I've got my right hand on top if you could do the same. So now we do shift our weight to the right, and there's a bit of rotation. And then I exchange the hands, and then I carry myself across to the left. So now we're exploring that relationship between how far I feel comfortable moving within that base of support from one side to the other as we do wave hands. Again, there's some interesting studies on this movement all by itself and just how challenging it is in relation to our sense of balance. Let's go one more time to the right and hopefully we're going to end up on the left because this time we're going to bring that left hand up and we're going to catch our familiar beach ball. There it is. His open and close. So again, we're in a stable position. We can focus on the open and close. 
And then we're going to drop the hands gently down to the right. That just facilitates a little shift in weight. And then we sweep the hands, if you remember, across to the left. And then we let the hands relax completely and sweep them diagonally back up to the right. And then we do our little dip and circle. And now we're going to clear an imaginary bookshelf all the way to the left. I can look in that direction and all the way back to the center where I catch our next beach ball. There we go. So all of that movement comes to a rest and then we get open and close. Gives us a little respite. Down to the left this time with the hands. Sweeping our surface clear to the right. Letting the hands relax as we sweep them back up to the left. We do our little circle down and around and turn the hands over and clear our bookshelf this time to the right. And then we sweep back to the center and we get our next beach ball. Here it comes, catch. Once again, we're nice and stable. We can focus on the open and close. And then we simply get the left hand on top for our wave hands movement and we're back in motion again. Turning to the left, swapping hands, right hand on top, turn to the right. And we're in our wave hand sequence. Nominally, we're doing this three full cycles. But again, don't worry if you lose count, it really doesn't matter. But this is the end of our third cycle. I'm heading to the right. I'm gonna let the right hand drop, but I'm gonna pick it back up. And we're catching our very last beach ball. And then let's open and close. And then to finish nicely, I showed you, let me come closer. <laughs> I showed you this little flower movement, dropping my hands down, in, up, and across, like so. It's a very nice finish. It's a movement often referred to as a flower, these little gestures, you'll find them in all kinds of dance, particularly from Eastern traditions, from the Middle East, all the way across to the Far East, these little flowers made with hands. Um, I'm thinking of traditional uh, Kathak dance from India or Balinese dance kind of traditions and Malaysian dance traditions. You'll see these little flowers of hand movements. Um, but it makes a very nice and neat ending. So here's that thing that in Tai Chi, in a sequence of Tai Chi movements, we have moments of stillness, lots of stability. And then we also have moments of more dynamic movement, challenging our balance. And Tai Chi describes this alternation from one state that is dynamic to another state that is more stable. So again, that's another descriptor of Tai Chi. It helps us explore these two states, Tai Chi meaning polar opposites uh, and representing this dynamic change. Should we have a go? But I'm gonna do this seated now for people who might be watching later from a seated position. If you want to do it standing up, that's okay. But let's just illustrate that. So from a seated position, I'm gonna be moving my trunk from side to side, for instance, when we're doing wave hands, just to facilitate that same kind of shift of weight that we gained when we were standing up. So again, we still get an opportunity to explore this interplay and dynamic between movement and stillness. In fact, there's a lovely traditional saying, certainly 
I came across it very early on when I was learning Tai Chi. It's called Movement with Stillness. And it kind of, again, represents this dynamic between two states, nice and still, calm, like a lake, and then dynamic. Maybe the wind comes along and creates some waves. Okay, so let's go again. Ready, steady, three chi shirts. So again, nice and stable. The only thing moving really are the hand and arms. Everything else is nice and still and steady. Hopefully the focus of our attention is purely upon the hand and arm movement. Here's our transition now into wave hands. We're getting the right hand on top. And it's only now that we begin to make some weight shift towards the right. I've got my weight on my right hip now. And then I exchange hands and I begin to transfer my weight across to the left hip. So again, we're in charge of our balance in relation to that base of support that we have with our stance or with our seat. I'm gonna to head to the left for the last time. So we've had all of that movement and we're gonna come and catch our beach ball. There it is. And we come to a rest. So there's more stillness now as we just let that beach ball expand and contract. And then we're into a bit more movement, this time down to the right with the hands. There's a little bit of weight shift in that direction. A sweep of the hands across to the left, letting the fingers relax as we sweep back up to that right side. And then this little circle of the hands before we clear the bookshelf to the left. Turn the hands over, bring them back to the center. And as we do so, we catch our beach ball. There it is. Once again, stillness. Just a little bit of hand movement to give an intimation of something else happening. Here we go to the left. There's a bit of weight shift. I sweep the hands to the right this time. Let the hands relax as we re-sweep them back up to the left. Here's our little circle down and around. And then we're clearing the decks again, this time to the right. Turn the hands over, bring them back to the center. Here's our next beach ball. And again, we come to a rest again. Open and close. Here we go again with wave hands, only it's left hand on top and we're into movement again, shifting weight from one side and then to the right as the right hand comes on top. And then back again. So we've just got this alternation from left to right, which in itself is a yin yang dynamic if we want to put it in those terms so i'm heading to the left to set myself up for the last time on the right side i'm going to drop that right hand bring it back up for our final beach ball come to a rest just let that beach ball expand Squeeze it back. And then we can simply cross the hands. Doesn't matter which one. And we make our little flower. Drop the fingers down, in, up, and around. It's like magic. <laughs> and then separate the hands and down. Uh, just for a very nice, neat finish with a little bit of a flourish. Um, it's the bit that everyone kind of likes and enjoys, to be honest. But there you go. That's Tai Chi kind of exploring the relationship between a philosophy of change and dynamic and movement and stillness 
with our bodies. Again, Tai Chi and other movement modalities such as yoga, for instance, are considered embodied philosophies because we use our bodies to um, evoke the, the philosophy, excuse me, um, that underpins it. Um, and that can be quite attractive, as you know, to people all around the world who have adopted these practices um, for what they bring in terms of that uh, embodied sense of knowledge and philosophy, which might be different from, from our own. But it's quite nice, isn't it, I hope, to explore this dynamic between stability and balance and this kind of dynamic of yin and yang, movement and stillness. Okay, let's bring things to a close. Let me stand up for the final bit. So we'll have a wider base of support again, but we'll have a little focus again on keeping stable while letting the hands and arms do their thing, but it facilitates us to be able to feel calm because we're stable even though we're moving our hands and arms. So. We're going to pick the hands up to each side, up, almost overhead. So we've formed a big circle. And then we're going to drop the hands down. And you can have a little kind of bend forward and let the hands drop down. You go as far as you feel comfortable and then pick them up again. So we're tracing the circumference of a very large sphere or circle not quite touching at the top, but we almost touch and then we turn the hands away and we slowly bring them down. We can drop down a little bit, again, seated or standing, almost touch at the bottom and then come back up again. Very simple. If we wish to add an extra element to this, we could bring the breath in if we wished, couldn't we? So as I come down to the bottom, if it feels right for you, you could have a big breath in because that lift of the arms facilitates a big breath in. And then as we let the hands go, we could just let the breath go, sung to let go. In fact, we might get an extra breath in if we wish before we go again. Again, we don't want to force things with the breath. We'll work very comfortably. Let's make this our final one. So we'll just lift the hands for one last time. Again, could be a breath in. And now this time the hands are just going to come slowly but surely back down to the side. Wonderful. If you did get a bigger, wider stance, time to work your way back in. The sort of downside of having big wide stances is that, yes, they're very stable, but they're not very movable. I always put it in the terms of being in a muddy field in Wellington boots and how you, if you get stuck in a muddy field in Wellington boots with no wide stance, you're kind of stuck, aren't you? It's very difficult to extricate yourself without either falling forwards or backwards. I'm sure we've all been there, hopefully, maybe <laughs> in one sense. So a bigger, wider stance gives us big stability, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can move easily from that stance. So there's a balance, again, between how wide we get our base of support. So let's bring things to a close with a closing movement, once again, with a stable base, lifting and just drawing the hands in and then gently pressing down and then pushing forwards. Could be a breath in as we breathe those hands towards us and then just let the breath go on the out. Again, if that feels good for you. And we'll do that one more time. But as we bring the hands up and down, we can link thumbs and let the hands come to a rest. And now everything has come to a rest. If you're seated, you really have come to a rest. If we're stood up, we're still going to have to manage our balance a bit. 
So now we can really maybe focus a little bit on the breath because we're not moving. And so we might rest our eyes and just pay attention to our breath or to the sights and sounds around us just for a few seconds because as far as we're concerned, we've come to a standstill and it means that we can focus elsewhere. And then we can part our hands when we're ready. And that kind of signals the end. I guess the ultimate expression of that stillness would be to be seated. Or if you could do so, to be sat on the floor. Uh, maybe cross-legged if, if, if that's something that feels comfortable for you. And that really stabilizes us. And then that's where we get all of these kind of meditative traditions. People are still so that they can focus on their thoughts and feelings and other things. So I hope that's been interesting. I hope it's kind of made a connection between physical stability and balance and also our overall kind of emotional state and um, sense of balance in that form. And it also gives us a clue, doesn't it? Maybe that sometimes if we feel distracted and anxious, sometimes getting out and moving is a good way to begin to deal with that. If we try and sit down and deal with it, sometimes it's too much. We need to move the body first of all, then we can come back, sit down, get some focus and um, so it gives us some clues maybe to sometimes how we might manage our general state of mind from day to day. Let me know what you think. I'm going to stop the recording um, and let you go. If that's prompted any questions you can always get in touch or you can ask them now. <laughs>